Hello and welcome to the introduction to algebra. Before we get started, I wanted to share with you um, uh, two scriptures. Uh, the first <laughs> is actually written in a different language. Uh, this is 1 Nephi chapter 1 verse 1 and uh, I have it here in Spanish and also in English. I do this uh, for an important reason about what we're going to be doing, uh, dealing with here in math today. I'm going to go ahead and read this. Uh, it is, uh, my Spanish isn't that great, but uh, I'll give it a try. Yo, Nefi, nací de buenos padres, y recibí, por tanto, alguna instrucción en toda la ciencia de mi padre, y habiendo conocido muchas aflicciones durante el curso de mi vida, siendo, no obstante, altamente favorecido del Señor todos mis días, sí, habiendo logrado un conocimiento grande de la bondad y los misterios de Dios. Escribo, por tanto, la historia de los hechos de mi vida. Now, it's interesting, as you look at this and look down at the English, there's probably some words that you, you recognize, you can pick out. You can be like, uh, for example, Nephi, except it's spelt different, of course. Um, padres, uh, that's, that's parents, that's kind of close. Um, what are some other ones here? We can look at aflicciones, that's afflictions. And uh, what else? Vida means life. Maybe you've heard of that, or, or days. Maybe you've heard of that one before. <clears throat> or even God. God in Spanish is Dios. Historia is record. Anyway, when we go from one language to another, we often call that translating. Translating. Um, we know that Joseph Smith translated the Book of Mormon um, from, the, from the gold plates to, uh, to English. And then we also uh, have translated that into other languages. Uh, there's like over 200 languages that the Book of Mormon has been translated into. Translating is really important. And I bring this up because today's lesson, today's math lesson, is going to be about translating. Uh, a lot of people call math a, uh, a foreign language, and it is. It's different than English, um, and it has its own translation. And so we have to be able to convert from English to, to math. Uh, we've got to be able to take a, a, math, a, a math sentence and be able to turn it into an equation. That's going to be our goal today. And so... Uh, when we, we're going to get started, and we're going to be taking a look at some of the translations, some of these words that we have to know. Let's get started. So let's discuss uh, this idea of translating. There's uh, some terms here that we want to uh, talk about. And um, the first one are all of the translation words for uh, addition. So we've got addition here, and uh, a list of all the words that mean addition. So we've got uh, some. Some is a, a translated word to mean addition. We have more. We have plus, <clears throat> increased by, and added to. All of these words mean addition. So, for example, if we were given uh, the statement, nine more than some number. So, nine more than some number. How would you translate that into math? Well, we would take some number, uh, I use the letter x to represent that some number, and then do 9 more, x plus 9, because more means addition. So let's take a look at uh, some of the other translated words that we're going to need to know uh, for this lesson. We have subtraction, which uh, can also translate into difference, less, less than, and that one's highlighted because we're going to talk about it, minus decreased by or fewer than. So all of these words translate into subtraction. And we should be ready to see those and uh, use a subtraction whenever we're told to. For example, if we said some number decreased by 13. So some number decreased by 13. Now this, uh, if I said translate this into math, you would take some number, and you can pick any variable here. We're going to go ahead and use the variable n on this one, just for fun. Some number decreased by 13. Well, decrease by means subtraction. So we would say n minus 13. OK, so uh, like I said, we highlighted the word less than. Because less than is uh, one of those unique uh, ones that is actually translated backwards. Um, the word less than, it's kind of like in Spanish. We say 
Uh, instead of saying white house, we say house white, la casa blanca. Um, when we use the word less than, it is also going to have a backwards translation. So if I would have said five less than some number, five less than some number, how would you translate this? Five less than some number. Um, a lot of people would want to directly translate this and put five minus x. This is not right. Er, don't do this. Five less than some number translates backwards when doing mathematics. You need to write x minus 5. Basically, you're, you, you've got some number, and you're going to do 5 less than that. That's another way of thinking of it. So when you see 5 less than some number, remember to write x minus 5. OK, so let's work with uh, multiplication. Here's the words for multiplication. Uh, we have the words product. That means to multiply. We have times, which means to also multiply, multiplied by, and of. All of these four words are the translations for um, our math terms for multiplication. So if we were given the problem, for example, um, 3 times a number increased by 7. How would we write this or translate it into a math equation? Well, we would just do 3 times a number, which would be 3n, increased by, remember that's our uh, word for addition, and so we would put plus 3n plus 7. We also use uh, the word of. Notice of is there for, um, for multiplication. Of is often used for um, percents. For example, if I would have said, hey, what is 10% of your salary? Okay, 10% of your salary uh, of means multiplication. And we often do this problem for paying tithing. This is just an example. And so 10% of S, now we don't usually like to leave percents in a math equation. When translating percents to math, we always write them as decimals. So we're going to move the decimal place over two spots here, and we're going to write this as 0.10s, or you can simply write it as 0.1s. Remember that when doing percents in a math equation, when we translate those, we like to convert them to decimals. OK, and the last one that we want to look at, the last code words here uh, are for division. The words are quotient, divided by, the ratio of, and also per, uh, like 60 seconds per minute. Um, we use division for those. So these are our code words, um, our translating words that we use when wanting to convert things from words to math equations. Let's have you guys do some practice problems. OK, so here are one, two, three, four, five problems. We'd like you to take out your notebook, write down these five problems, and then translate them into their math equations. The first one is 75% of some number. The next one, 6 more than 4 times some number. The next one, 5 less than twice some number. The one after that here in blue is the sum of 4 times a number plus 3 times another number. And the last one is 12 decreased by the product of 8 and some number. The of got cut off there, but that's of 8 and some number. OK, pause the video. Good luck. And push the play button when you're ready to resume. OK, so let's take a look at these answers here. Make sure that you're good at translating. First one is 75% of some number. Uh, so 75%, this of means multiplication. So uh, it would be 75% of some number. I'm going to use the number x. Although we need to also translate the percent to uh, a decimal. And so you should have written that the, num the answer is 0.75x. OK, let's try 6 more. Well, more means plus. Then 4 times, that's multiplication and some number. I'm going to go ahead and use x again. So 6 more means 6 plus, And 4 times some number would be 4n. That's what you should have got for the second one. 
Here we have five less. Ooh, less than, less than. That's the one of those that you got to write backwards. Five less than twice some number. So we're going to have twice some number, and we need to do less than five. Five less than twice some number should have been the answer for this third one. Remember, less than translates backwards, like in Spanish. The sum of four times a number plus three times another number, so sum of four times a number, well, that's four times a number, plus three times another number, so three, and I'm, it's a different number, so I'm going to use a different letter there. I went ahead and used N and M, but you could have used either numbers on that. Okay. 12 decreased, well, decrease means subtraction by the product, ooh, that's multiplication, of eight and some number. So 12 is being decreased by eight and some number. So those are the translations you should have got for those five problems. How'd you do? Hopefully well. There's one last thing we want to talk about here in this lesson. Let me clear the board and we'll get to it. So the last thing we want to remember is that with each variable, a variable is nothing more than, than something that represents something. So if I had, for example, x plus 3y over uh, over 2. Remember that we can plug values in for x and y and then use order of operations to solve them. For example, if x was 4 and y was um, 2, we could actually figure out what this value was by plugging 4 uh, in for x whoop, and 2 in for y. Whoop. Doing that would get me 4 plus 3 times 2 all over 2. And since we already talked about this in the review chapter, we just use order of operations. I'm going to work just with the top and do multiplication first. So I would get 4 plus 6 over 2. I then add the top, and I get 10 over 2, which gets me 5. Please remember that these variables represent values. And they can represent any values. And we can uh, allow them to uh, change and, and do different things with them. And that's allowing us to create these equations um, in a general form. Hello and welcome to Geometry and Formulas. So before we get started, we want to define a few terms for you to make sure that we're all on the same page on what these mean. The first term that we want to define is perimeter. Perimeter is basically the distance around an object, or, or the sum of all of the lengths. So perimeter is the distance it takes to go around an object. And that's the outside distance. So uh, here's a couple examples. So here are two examples, and if I ask you to find the perimeter of these objects, uh, perimeter again is just the distance all the way around. So we would simply do for this first one 21 plus another 21 plus 40 plus 21 plus 21 plus 40. Adding all those together together would then uh, give us our uh, grand total uh, of, of perimeter. And so we would just simply add those together. 40 and 40 is 80. And then 4 21s. 21 plus 21 is 42. 63, 84. We have 84 plus 80 is 164. Now, perimeter is simply a one-dimensional measure because we're just measuring the distance. And so therefore, when we use units to label, we would just say that the answer is yards. The perimeter of this object is 124 yards. OK, great. What we'd like you to do is pause the video, take out your video notebook, and work on this star-looking object here. Uh, this one right here, we'd like you to find the perimeter of this object. Go ahead and give it a try, and then push the play button when you're ready to check your answer. OK, great. How'd you do? Again, perimeter is just the distance all the way around. So I would just do 2 plus 1.5 plus 1.5 plus 2 so that's this 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 plus another 2 plus another 1.5 plus another 1.5 plus 2 when we add all those together let's see i'm going to add the 2's first 2 4 6 8 that's 8 
and the 1.5s, well, two 1.5s makes three, so three plus six. And of course, you could have used your calculator as well. Correct answer here would have been 14. And then how did you label? Ooh, I hope you didn't forget the label. Remember, labeling is really important. We don't want to lose that. The correct answer there would have been 14 meters. So that's how you do perimeter. Now, often when dealing with certain special shapes, for example, a uh, rectangle, we can use uh, formulas to find the perimeter. And I've gone ahead and written, uh, I've gone ahead and put this uh, formula sheet up here because these are some of the formulas that we're going to want you to know for uh, our first test. And when it comes to perimeter, we want you to remember that the perimeter of a rectangle is simply two times the length plus two times the width or they have it written there as uh, two times the base plus two times the height. Either way works. So uh, when dealing with rectangles, remember you can use that formula to help you. Or you can simply do what we just, we just did and add up all the sides. Let's take a look at some rectangles. So I put two rectangles up here uh, on the board. Uh, we have one that uh, measures 18 yards and uh, for its length, and then a 5 yards for the width. So if I wanted to use the formula to calculate the perimeter, I could do that simply by doing 2 times the length, which is 18, plus 2 times the width, which is 5. And that's what the perimeter is going to equal. And so when I do that, I get 36 plus 10 which is 46. And again, don't forget the label here. Here, this problem was in yards, so I would say that the answer is in yards. 46 yards to go all the way around. Okay, very good. You try the perimeter of this other rectangle. Feel free to use the formula. We're going to have you do some decimals. You may want to bust out your calculator. You're more than welcome to. Go ahead and pause the video and give this one a try. Okay, how did we do? On this problem, uh, you could have done it, uh, well, of course, a couple different ways. But if you use the formula, you would have done 2 times 12.6 plus 2 times 2.9. Uh, you then could have used the calculator if you wanted to. Sometimes it's uh, all right to do that. Uh, 2 times 12.6. It may have been easier to do it uh, by hand, uh, actually. but. We could also plug it in. So I did 12, 2 times 12.6 plus 2 times 2.9. And the answer comes out to be 31. And you should have labeled that as centimeters. So that's the perimeter of a rectangle. Excellent. The next thing we want to talk about, is, since we've got rectangles here, is uh, talk about area, area of rectangles. So area is a two-dimensional two-dimensional measurement. It's the amount of space uh, or amount of yeah of space inside uh, a closed object. So uh, amount of space. Um, and so uh, for these rectangles, for example, it would be the amount of of space. It's two-dimensional. You have to have a two-dimensional object to be able to do this. And because it's two-dimensional, our units will always be reported as units squared, because it requires two dimensions. Uh, notice this rectangle has length and width. And uh, the area of a rectangle is, is simply that. It's to do area equals length times width. So all you have to do is multiply the length and the width. For this first rectangle here, I would have done 18 times 5. You can use a calculator if you want, or uh, do it in your head. Comes out to be 50 plus 40, which is 90 yards. And we would put squared, because this is an area measurement. An area measurement. Area is always reported in square units, in this case, square yards. So let's have you do this other rectangle. Go ahead and pause your video and give this rectangle a try. Make sure you do uh, area equals length times width. Good luck. Back already? Good. Area equals length times width. You simply would have done 12.6 centimeters times 2.9 centimeters. When I do that, I'm going to go ahead and use the calculator and do 12.6 times 2.9 
push the enter button, we get 36.54 centimeters squared. Don't forget the label. Labeling's important here. And that's how we do area of a rectangle. Now, let's go take a look in our formulas here because uh, there's some other important ones that we need to know. Notice that uh, here we have uh, this object here is called a parallelogram. And the area of a parallelogram is also area equals base times height. The area of a triangle is one half the base times height. And so uh, those two objects uh, will also we'll also be testing you on to make sure that you can fi figure out the area of a parallelogram and also the area of a triangle using those formulas. Okay, so here on the board we have two uh, of these shapes, two parallelograms, and uh, again the, the area for a parallelogram is uh, just the same as a rectangle. The area equals base times height. Uh, the reason that is actually um, is because if you were to cut this off, take a little chainsaw and go <laughs> cut that off and then uh, place it right here, it would actually form just a rectangle and all we'd have left is a rectangle. So that's why they have the same area formula, um, which is kind of interesting. So uh, here we would simply do area equals the base, which is 12 meters, times the height, which was 4 meters, and multiply those together to get 48 meters squared. Okay, you give this other parallelogram a try. Uh, take, use your video notebook, just so you can keep working on it, and uh, work on this one. See if you can figure out what the area is. Push the play button when you're ready to resume. Okay, so uh, here you just have to figure out what the base and the height were, because we know the equation is area equals base times height. The base is uh, right here, it's this 8 centimeters, so I write 8 centimeters, and the height they illustrate uh, with a uh, altitude here with a dotted line going down, um, that's 9 centimeters, and so uh, we simply do uh, 8 times 9 to get 72 square centimeters. And that's what you should have got for that answer there. So that's how you do area of a parallelogram. It's the same as the area of a rectangle. OK, the area of a triangle is simply 1 half base times the height. Sometimes people like to say base times height divided by 2. Both those formulas are the same, so uh, you can do it whichever one you like. Uh, that's what we would recommend you to do. Um, when you're doing that, you just need to identify again the base and the height and take that and put it into the formula. So in this one, uh, the base is 12 and the height is h, so area equals 1 half times the base, which was 12 feet, times the height, which is 8 feet. And so 1 half times 12 is 6, 6 times 8 is 48, we get 48 square feet. If you're struggling with the math there, you can use your calculator. Uh, you could type in 1 half, 1, remember to use this uh, ABC button, times 12, times 8, and we get 48 square feet. So that's how you do that one. Go ahead and give this next triangle a try and see how you do. Pause the video and push the play button when you're ready to resume. Okay, good. So uh, let's take a look here on this one. You should have done area equals one half base times height, which would be area equals one half times 11.25 times 15.6. I'm definitely going to bust out a calculator here to help me on this one. I'm going to go uh, 1 half times 11.25 uh, times 15.6, 1 half the base times the height, and we get an answer of 87.75. And the units there would be square meters. Again, area is a second dimensional measurement, so we always use square units. Okay, here's a little word problem for you. Let's say that we're roofing our house and uh, we need to find the amount of shingles that we need to put on the house. In other words, the area 
of the triangular part here of, of this roof. And so uh, we're going to leave that to you to go ahead and try also in your notebook to find the area in square yards of roof that you need to shingle. Go ahead and pause your video and use the formula to uh, figure out the area there. Push the play button when you're ready to resume. Great! So you should have done uh, area equals one half base times the height. Um, or you could have done base times height over two. I'm going to use this second one here since we did it the other way last time. So I'm going to do four. That's uh, the height. So uh, it's actually uh, the base is seven times four, which is the height, divided by two. Seven times four is just 28, and 28 divided by two is 14. So we need 14 square yards of shingles to roof our house. We could have also asked you uh, if it costs $5 per, per square yard, how much would the total cost of uh, roofing this, uh, this portion of the roof cost? And if that was the case, we would just take 14 square yards times $5 and we would have found out that we're spending 70 bucks to do that portion of the roof. Okay, it's uh, time to talk about circles. Let's talk about circles here, uh, because circles are an interesting uh, object, because they're a little harder to measure than uh, some of these straight uh, straight figures that we've been doing. Um, and so we do need to talk about circles. I have included both the formulas over here. Uh, the first is circumference. Circumference of a circle is the same as perimeter, um, but we call it circumference. So circumference is the distance all the way around, distance around the circle. Whereas the area, well, area formula is right here. And area is the amount inside the circle. So cir circumference of a circle, the formula is circumference equals 2 pi r. And area of a circle, the formula is pi r squared. Let's uh, bring out some circles and uh, work these out and see uh, what we get here. OK, so when uh, doing area and circumference of a circle, we have to use a special number. That number, uh, you you probably heard of the number is pi and uh, for a long time people have tried to figure out what really pi is uh, we've come to realize now that pi is an irrational number it's a number that goes on forever um, we often just use 3.14 but it does keep going 1592 dot 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 it goes on forever it's an irrational number meaning that it has no pattern and goes on forever. And so we use this uh, number to help us calculate the circumference and area of pi. So if I was going to work with this uh, uh, circle here, circumference equals 2 times pi times r. Uh, so I would go 2 times pi times, and the r, the radius of this circle, is the distance from the center to the edge, which would be 4. And so I'm going to go 2 times pi times 4. Now, on your calculators, you should be able to find a pi button. And uh, you're more than welcome to use the pi button. Or you can use 3.14 as, as well. That works as well. Um, my pi button, notice I have to push the yellow button and then this button here to get pi. 2 times pi. You may have to do the same, depending on what kind of calculator you have. 2 times pi times 4. I push the Enter button. And I find out that it's 25 point one three two seven and it keeps going we'll go ahead and round it to the nearest hundredth which is twenty five point one three the units here would be inches because we're doing circumference now for area area would be pi times r squared which would be pi times the radius the radius again was four four squared and that gets me pi times 4 squared is 4 times 4 is 16. So in my calculator, I need to do pi times 16 to get my answer. Again, we'll round to the nearest hundredth, so 50.26. But I'm going to round up because the next number is 5, so 50.27. And my units here, because I'm doing area, would be inches squared. So that's how we do circumference and area of a circle. 
using the number pi. Again, if you want to use 3.14, that's fine. And uh, what we'd like you to do is find the circumference and area of this uh, second triangle, uh, second circle right here. Go ahead and pause the video and work on finding the circumference and area of both of those circles, uh, of that circle, uh, to uh, make sure you know how to do it. You can hit the play button when you're ready to resume. Okay, great. So in your video notebook, you should have uh, done this problem already. The circumference is 2 pi r. I'm going to need to find the radius of this one. Now, this is interesting because here in this problem, they gave us the diameter all the way across. So for the radius, we're going to need to take and divide this by 2. So 21 divided by 2 is actually 10.5. Our radius is really 10.5. So to find the circumference, I'm going to do 2 times pi times 10.5, and then I'm going to use my calculator to help me out here. I'm going to go 2 times pi times 10.5, and again, round it to the nearest hundredth, so 65.97. Sorry, 65.97 feet uh, is my answer for the circumference. How did you do? You may have gotten just a slightly different answer if you would have used 3.14, but we should be really close. The area is pi r squared. I would have taken pi times 10.5 squared. So in my calculator, there's two ways to do 10.5 squared. You could just do 10.5 times 10.5. That would have been a fine way to do it. Or you could find the squared button here. 10.5 squared, and then I times that by pi, and I get that our area answer is 346.36. And you should have used the units of feet squared. How'd you do? Hopefully really well on that. Uh, again, circles, uh, finding the area and circumference of circles has been a question that's been long asked, even uh, way before our time. In fact, it's even mentioned in the Bible. Let's take a look at it. So this is interesting. This comes from 1 Kings chapter 7, verse 23. This is talking about Solomon's temple. And uh, I'm really inter I really like this. Uh, it has to do with what we're talking about. It says, And he made a molten sea, ten cubits from the one brim to the other. It was round all about. So that's interesting. So he made this C, and we're, you're like, wow, what's this C? But uh, we'll talk about that here in just a second. Uh, what we want to talk about is what would be this, the circumference of this C? Um, if we were to go uh, and find the circumference, the distance all the way about, what would you get? Go ahead and pause the video, and uh, this is our last problem that we'll work. Oh, actually, not that's true. Uh, go ahead and work on this in your video notebook, and uh, let's see what you get. Uh, push the play button when you're ready to resume. Okay, great. Hopefully you used uh, the circumference formula. Circumference equals 2 pi r. And hopefully you remembered to take half of the radius. Notice this 10 cubits is a diameter, so they just want 5 here. And so the circumference would be 2 times pi times 5. And if we use our calculator, 2 times pi times 5, we would find out that the distance all the way around is 31.42. The distance around is 31.42. Now that's interesting because in the next verses in the Bible, it talks about the total distance all the way around. Let's take a look at it. So take a look. If, as we finish the verse, it says that the line all the way around it was 30 cubits to go around it, which is interesting because we got the answer of 31.42. Huh, that's crazy. It shows that uh, in the Bible they didn't have the exact measurement uh, of pi. Um, some people say this is because maybe they just mismeasured. Uh, some people say that, that maybe it was just uh, because the Hebrews were bad at math, which <laughs> is kind of funny that the Hebrews were bad at math. But um, that's interesting uh, that, that we actually got the more exact answer, um, and the Bible kind of has a, a rounded 30 cubits answer. Now, what is this C that it's talking about? Well, we can keep reading. Take a look. Verse 24, it says, And under the brim... Of it, round about, there were knops, which are like decorations, cup, compassing it. Ten in a cubit, compassing the sea round about. The knops were cast into two rows when it was cast. 
In verse 25 we, re- we read, It stood upon twelve oxen, three looking towards the north, three looking towards the west, three looking toward the south, and three looking towards the east. And the sea was set above upon them, and all their hinder parts were inward. So this, uh, we actually learned that uh, this sea here is actually, uh, the, um, was built in Solomon's temple, but it's uh, the same design that we use uh, in our latter-day temples to uh, build uh, baptismal fonts in, in the temple, which is uh, kind of interesting. That's cool. So uh, circles, they're all over, and uh, even the, since, since the Bible, we've talked about measuring them roundabout, finding the circumference or finding the area. Okay, great. The last type of measurement that we need to talk about today is volume. We want to talk about volume. The volume is the amount of space that needs to be filled. Volume is a 3D or three-dimensional measurement, and it's the amount to fill. So uh, to be able to do this, you have to have a 3D object, something with three dimensions, like length, width, and height. And uh, we need to uh, be able to fill it. And when we do this, our units are always going to be reported in units cubed. Cubic units is uh, going to be the goal here. Uh, in this lesson, we're only going to talk about uh, rectangular prisms. Um, and the formula is right here. The volume of a rectangular prism is simply length times width times height. So uh, for this example here, uh, we would go volume equals length times width times height. Well, the length is 4, the width is 7, and the height is 3. We would simply multiply those together to uh, get our answer. Uh, I'm going to do 7 times 3, that's 21 times 4 is 84 cubic centimeters. Go ahead and uh, do this other one in your notebook in your video notebook and uh, let's see what we get and we'll compare our answers press the play button when you're ready to resume okay how'd you do hopefully well we're gonna simply use the formula volume equals length times width times height which would be 5 times 22 times 13 I'm uh, gonna go ahead and use my calculator here because the numbers are a little bigger than the way my brain is thinking right now 5 times 22 times 13 is 1430 and how'd you label that hopefully you labeled it as cubic feet you could have written out cubic feet or simply put feet cubed either way works so the moral of today's story is that these formulas are a great way to find perimeter area and volume and to remember that perimeter is the distance all the way around it's one dimensional Area is the amount inside, it's a two-dimensional measurement, and volume is the amount to fill. It's a three-dimensional uh, measurement, and we use these formulas right here to do so. Okay, well, thank you so much for uh, joining us, and we will see you in the next lesson.